You guys doing all right? That's good. Good, good. Well, quiz three is upon us. Um, let's see what uh, I have moving forward. So that'll open up here shortly, and then um, I think stay open for two, three days. Okay, so we go back to lecture, we'll have World War II, classical phase, and then midterm is March 10. That does mean I need to post a study guide for you for midterm if that's coming up in 10 days. So don't let me forget to do that, please. Otherwise, uh, quiz three is the issue at hand. So. Um, documents for this one, note when you're looking at the course schedule that there are excerpts that I've linked to in the course schedule from W.B. Du Bois, The Talented Tenth, and Ida Wells, The Red Record, both of which I talked about in here during lecture, hopefully you'll recall. Um, with The Talented Tenth, pay attention to uh, what Du Bois says that black folks need to do in order to advance as a people. And you'll recall from lecture, even though we split it up because we ran out of time on Du Bois, that he has substantially different ideas about this uh, than does, say, Booker T. Washington especially, those two being the leading public intellectuals, in the case of Washington specifically, an educator of the day, and uh, Du Bois even mentions Washington, so you might want to pay extra special attention when he mentions by name Booker T. Washington and uh, criticizes him a little bit directly. So how do those two have different ideas about black advancement and what does Du Bois have to say about that? And then you'll also read some excerpts from Ida Wells' The Red Record, which, if you recall from lecture, was Wells' uh, book, her study, uh, academic study of lynching, where she dispels um, white people's sort of what she'll call excuses, reasons why they give for the fact that these lynchings are occurring and I think she even enumerates, like, one, two, three, these are the excuses or the reasons that white people have, and let me show you, let me debunk that, let me show you how that is false. And now let me show you the real reason that these lynchings are happening. So pay attention to what she says or white people's rationale that she lists out. And then, of course, too, to the actual reason, or the real supposed offense that has been committed. And if you do that, that'll get you through the two documents. That's four questions, two from each. And then the remaining questions will be from the three lectures of this period, which if you'll recall, were reconstruction. And remember that was a part one and two, although it was all one class period, all one lecture. And then we had Freedom's First, Generations. And then the third was Great War, Great Migration, Harlem Renaissance. And if I'm not mistaken, all three of those are posted and linked uh, in iCollege to the YouTube site. If not, let me know. You said Reconstruction. Freedom's First, Generation, and then Great War, Great Migration, Harlem Renaissance was all in one. That was the last one. Okay. So with Reconstruction, First takeaway there should be, uh, you should be able to tell me the difference between presidential and congressional reconstruction. What, when the radical Republicans in Congress take over reconstruction policy making, what's different then about reconstruction than when Presidents Lincoln and Johnson were in charge? So how do the radical Republicans make reconstruction a lot more stringent and thorough 
then Reconstruction had been under Presidents Lincoln and Johnson. Okay, so the difference between presidential Reconstruction and... Congressional, as in when the radical Republicans took over. Okay. And if you go back and look at that uh, PowerPoint, that's kind of how those first few slides are organized. I kind of laid out what's the general difference and then, okay, so what did Presidential Reconstruction involve? What's different when Congress takes over? And that's a way to explain how we got to what Du Bois called Black Reconstruction, right? To the actual point of, for a while there, for about you know 10 years, a little bit more, during the 1860s and 70s, black people in the South actually able to vote to elect representatives. You remember we looked at Robert Smalls going to Congress, Hiram Revels a senator, Blanche Bruce a senator. But then that sets up, of course, the so-called redemption. So you should be able to tell me about that too. Um, what is it that gets us from the 1870s and black reconstruction and actual African Americans voting and serving in state legislatures and serving in Congress in Washington to by 1900, the South is solidly white supremacist in the hands of the Democratic Party at the time and black people have been completely disenfranchised. The whole region is segregated. Uh, what allows for that to happen? So we talked about a handful of Supreme Court decisions. So go back to that Reconstruction lecture and pay attention to those major Supreme Court decisions and how they sort of chip away at the value or the meaning of the 14th and 15th Amendments. And speaking of the 15th Amendment, disenfranchisement, how do white people in the South achieve that? Remember, it wasn't so plain as with the black codes and the under-presidential reconstruction, the immediate aftermath of the war, where they just said flat out, yeah, black people can't vote in state and local elections. We couldn't be that blatant about it, so be able to tell me about some of the devices that they used to disenfranchise African Americans without just outright saying you can't vote. And in the case of segregation, they are able to outright say, well, we can, we we're going to segregate by race these public facilities because you had those series of decisions leading up to Plessy versus Ferguson. But I mentioned a few more like Crookshank after the Colfax massacre, the slaughterhouse cases, the civil rights cases, and so on. Uh, not and so on. I think that, that would be the sum total of them. So it's simultaneously the decisions of the Supreme Court and the actions of these state governments. And that will get you to the Freedom's First Generations lecture. Um, we we kind of shone a spotlight in that lecture on Ida Wells. In fact, I think she may be on the tail end of the Reconstruction lecture, if I'm not mistaken. But um, we talked about the beginnings of her sort of career as an investigative journalist. But even before that, she engaged in the early act of civil disobedience that I talked about. So if you don't remember that, go back and, and catch that. I mean, this is 75 years nearly before Rosa Parks famously refuses to give up her seat on Montgomery, Alabama bus. Ida Wells engages in a similar and, in fact, in some ways more radical um, attempt at civil disobedience or act of civil disobedience. Uh, in that lecture, I talked about um, the development of African American culture in the latter half of the 19th century, the late 1800s, and we talk about minstrelsy and then jazz and the blues. If you could speak to the origins of either jazz or the blues, um, as I did in that, in that lecture, that would cover you here. And how either of those musical forms was a uniquely African American cultural creation how do its origins tie into the history of, of slavery in America?
And that will get you to the Great War, Great Migration, Harlem Renaissance lecture. And pay particular attention to where I shown the spotlight on the Harlem Hellfighters and their experience in World War I or the Great War. What were what what characterized their experience in the war? And then uh, also in that lecture, before we, I think right before we got to the Harlem Renaissance there at the end, I spent quite a bit of time talking about Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey is especially important. Um, we can't talk about hardly any of the things that we have left to talk about in the African American history portion of this class without understanding the ideas and the career and the life of Garvey. You have to understand Garveyism moving forward. And so that's the sort of plainly obvious one that I'll ask about <clears throat> on both quiz and exam. So that is that. Any questions? Anything? Y'all can, the video will post, so y'all. Yeah. I'd rather not go back through the whole looking at it 12 minutes, okay. but <laughs> I'll, I'll, it will, it, it shouldn't take as long to post. Like sometimes these take literally all day to post because it's so slow uploading. Yeah. This being 12 minutes, it shouldn't take long at all. So, and, and I've got it on the iPad, which means it's easier to do than when I got it on my phone. So this should be uploaded, you know, within a couple hours. And then the quiz stays open for a couple of days, so it's not like you're under the gun um, on that. So. Is this going to be for this one too? No, just the quiz. So I think we go back to lectures. We have, looking at the schedule earlier, it looked like we had two more lectures and then midterm on March 10, so a week and a half from today. And we'll have a review day just for the midterm on that day. It'll be just like with the quizzes where we'll come in here and review. It'll open that day. It'll stay open for probably, in the case of the midterm, for a week or so. Um, so you've got a little breathing room. Unlike in some of my classes, we went straight, as you know, from quiz to exam. We got a little bit of, of, a, of a break in here. So No quiz on those, um, th but yes, there will be questions on the midterm, yeah. Uh, and I can't recall, you may be looking at it, but I think I actually have it pulled up here. Um, okay, so there is some extraneous reading associated with those. So I guess there will be, I don't know why I did that that way now looking at that. There will be on the midterm some questions from the Baldwin reading uh, from Notes of a Native Son, and then from Malcolm X, The Ballad or the Bullet. There will be questions on the midterm for those documents, but not any others, probably. Because I don't want you to have to go back and, and read a whole bunch of uh, documents you've already read and been quizzed on. So. But we'll talk about that. Uh, you've got a week and a half. Just focus on the quiz for now. And uh, I will go back and say the three lectures are Reconstruction, Freedom's First Generations, Great War, Great Migration, Harlem Renaissance. And then readings, if you're looking at the course schedule at the end of the syllabus, uh, W.B. Du Bois, The Talents and Tent, and Ida Wells, Red Record excerpts. Obviously, those are full length books, both of them. So you've got in the course schedule portion of the syllabus, there are links, and I tested them last night. They're still good. So um, that's what's covered on quiz three. Those three lectures and those two readings. And I, I walked everybody earlier through kind of what to focus on, so I would go back and watch this uh, video when you get the chance. <clears throat>